Are you ready to live the life? What's it like on your side of the world? Mm. It's grooving as always on living the life. I hope you're ready to have some fun. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show. Yeah, it's a new week and it's worth celebrating. So what's that new thing you're starting this week? Don't hold back, just start. Speaking about starting new things, no. honestly, <laughs> I don't know about you, <laughs> but whenever I have to start new things, I, I usually cringe. I know. Because I'm like, what if, what, what if? if? That but, fear of the unknown, yes. fear but every of time I decide against all odds, of right. course, with God helping me, to launch out in right. spite of the fear, I see amazing results. That's it. I may, um, it may be jittery at first, yeah. and I think that's what we are afraid of, that just that slow motion, you yes. know, before even a flight, for example, yes. before the flight takes off, yes. it starts gradually on the ground before it finally goes off. So off. I think understanding that it's a it's a complete package. You right. start small, yes. and then you go you you, you go big. Yes. Um, yeah. But then it shouldn't be uh, an excuse for not being to mediocre. start. Yeah. Or not to even start at all. Or not all. to even start at all. Yes. And then when you start, you stay in the same spot. Yeah. Sometimes I imagine big businesses, big organizations, big institutions like. CB in Africa, for mm -hmm. example, and you know those who pioneered the vision. Yeah. I imagine if they did not do anything about it, or they were just too afraid to start, yeah. or they were thinking, "What if? What if? What if? What if?" You know, we won't be here today. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You know, other ministries, you know, won't be where they are today. So I guess it's just to you know go with God and yeah. start and just just start. And yeah. um, we're talking about uh, ditching mediocrity today. Uh, so there's no reason why you've started something, you've launched out. Right. Um, there should be a level of advancement or improvement or progress over time yeah because mm -hmm. some people have this excuse eh, now we just they go we just they mm -hmm. go and they wonder wh why they're losing money well, they're they losing just, customers small business so now nah, eh, so you please, need to beef it I up i don't need this i don't need a branded <laughs> bag well, i don't know i'm just pushing my mm -hmm. business you, you have to, to like always try to take it a notch higher yeah. a little bit yes. yeah <laughs> All right, there will certainly be days of little beginnings, but we must make room for excellence. Mm -hmm. Remember, Rome was definitely not built in a day. After the break, let's find out how to grow out of mediocrity so we can truly live the life. See you soon. Made it, congratulations. So without further ado, I present architect Ochudo Ai. She is an architect, a certified life coach, a personal development, branding and reinvention coach, and a public speaker. As a speaker who has spoken internationally, she inspires, motivates, teaches, and trains. She offers executive and group coaching services, life trainings, workshops. She founded the Emerge and Dominate Africa community on Facebook, where she offers mentorships. She is the author of The Ultimate Guide to Transformational Personal Retreats, A to Z of Personal Branding, and Dare to be Seen. She's happily married with kids. Welcome to Living the Life Show. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. You look great. Thank you. So do you. Thank you. <laughs> so I'll just jump into the questions. All right. All right. Is mediocrity acceptable in the days of humble beginnings? Well, to um, be fair to those who are at humble beginning stage, you can only give what you have. If you do not have the capacity to give excellence at a certain level, you will be mediocre. Right. The trick is to ensure that you move from mediocrity to where you are able to offer excellence. Right. So we can tolerate or kind of like accommodate someone at the beginning stages if they're still delivering right. at a mediocre level. Okay. Yeah. But after some time you expect that. You expect that to if not yeah. That's an issue. Yes, yes. You expect that the person takes it up a notch higher. Yes. All right. Exactly. So how can you identify mediocrity versus starting small? Okay, so I'd like to give an example using two famous people okay. in the Bible. Is Let's that go okay? Ahead. Yes, please. Okay, so we have David okay. and then we have Saul. Okay. Saul became king and he had all the trappings of wealth, mm -hmm. power, and right. fame, isn't it? Right. But at some point in his journey, God discarded him. Mm -hmm. See, I can use this gentleman. I have another person out there who is young, right. but I can use him. Mm -hmm. Why? Because David started small. David was mediocre. Now, Saul refused to learn. Saul refused to evolve. Saul refused to 
um, grow into what was possible, what the, the idea that God had for him. for him. He continued to to have a poor relationship with God. And uh, David, on the other hand, had just a sling. Right. And when he showed up at the war front, it didn't matter. He was starting small with right. a sling. I mean, when he was given the outfit to where he's like, I can't wear this. It was this too is, heavy. This is global standard. <laughs> I'm still small. Wow. I just have a sling. Mm. But if I use my sling excellently, a time will come when I'll be excellent. So the difference between starting small and mediocre is that mediocrity just allows you to accommodate a less than average quality. Right. But starting small is just simply working with what you already have. David, at some point in his life, began to wield the sword of um, Benjamin, um, Goliath. Goliath. And they didn't tell us that he became Goliath's height. Right. Just the mere fact that he developed himself, mm -hmm. he no longer needed to use slings. Right. That's catapult. He had to, he graduated to wearing the full armor right. and being able to wield the sword. Now that is starting small and growing. Yes. Yeah, but Saul growth. came in at the level and wouldn't evolve, wouldn't grow, wouldn't, you know, do. so that's the difference between starting small yes. and, and being mediocre. Right. So mediocre allows you to excuse your feelings, yeah. give reason for why you are not growing. Yeah. But starting small, just shows us, us that you are you working with the capacity that you have. Right. And when you improve, it will show in your delivery. It will show. Yeah. To pick up from something you said there, a lot of businesses are trapped in that smallness. They get to a point where it's just hard for them to evolve to like the next level. Yeah. What do you think? What are the um, tips to just, you know, push a little bit and then break beyond that barrier of smallness and just of grow smallness. to another phase? Yes. Well, for many businesses that I've observed, they start small because they compare themselves to their current surroundings. Mm. Oh, this is who I am, and I'm better than the next person. But you see, in the world we are today, it's global. Right. Your next competition may be in the US or in China. Right. So the first thing you want to do as a business is to look at those who are doing what you want to do. Right, that's wisdom. Identify them, see how they operate, and at what level they operate on, and then mm. aim to. Allowing yourself to be caught up with your current surroundings will not allow you to grow. Right. So you must look up towards those who are already achieving what you want to achieve Great. and then grow. The second thing I'd recommend is that you should do your research. Yes. I mean, even if something is successful in, in Australia, it doesn't necessarily mean it to be successful here. Right. So take time to do the work, yes. do the plans, and then set goals towards that. Right. Set goals towards that plan. Thank you so yes. much. So that means you need to understand context when you're It's very when you're important, planning. yes. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. Can you share, like, um, major hindrances to you know pushing up from mediocrity and how we can handle them okay so um one of the basic basic elementary things for me right. is the quality of the mind that you have mm. known as mindsets mindset today. yes and that is influenced by what you how you were brought up mm. what you've been through right and significant emotional experiences that you've gone through very so true. what you want to do is first of all identify where you currently are in your life mm. look the world can lie to you don't lie to yourself that's a good so point. know where you are so that you know what mindset you are operating on and what mindset needs to go. Right. You know mindsets can be installed yes. and removed. You can undo you, them. That's right. You can have one and then you can remove it. Right. Yes. So you want, to, you want to make sure that you work on your mindset. You want to expose yourself to information. Great. You want to ditch the perfectionist tendency. Perfection okay. is a moving target. Right. No one is really perfect. And people buy into that philosophy that mm. I can be perfect. Mm. Just like we're preparing here today, the need to be perfect. Right. It's a lie. Yes. It's a moving target. No one is perfect. So prepare yourself to always involve. There's always room for improvement. Yeah, that could yeah. liberate someone. No one is <laughs> I perfect. I hope it does. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it does. Thank you. Thank you. And um, lastly, in the process of growth, you know, how can we stay clear of unhealthy comparison and, you know, still be inspired by people we aspire to be like, you know, without comparison? Um, I would recommend self-awareness. Mm. I would recommend self-awareness. There's something very powerful about knowing your strengths and your weaknesses. Right. So if I know I'm not a great singer, I will not be in unhealthy comparison with someone who is. So one of the first things people should do is identify their strengths and their weaknesses. Right. Become self-aware. What strengthens you? What weakens you? Yeah. 
what fuels you and what drains you of energy? Right. How do you react under the circumstance and how do you react? That lack of information about yourself makes people always compete with people they, they need not they, they should be learning from right you know so you want to be self-aware i think i think if if you even get the concept of self-awareness you've saved yourself half of the problems in this world mm. wow and you will not need to be trying to prove anything to people or in unhealthy competition like right. you said with them because you are not sure that they are doing better than you just find your path Right. and then do the best you can on that path. Right, yes. find your path and do the best you can on that path. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for Thank having you. me. It's this been was a pleasure. really insightful. Thank insightful. you very much. And I know that the viewers learned something because I did. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so for having much. me. Thank you. All right. If you've got any more questions about knocking off mediocrity and growing into all that God made you to be, then send us an email at livingthelife at cbnnigeria.org. We'll take a short break now, but Living the Life will be right back. Stick around. I enjoyed that interview. Yes, I did too. I felt challenged, yes. you know, to step up my game. It was really insightful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also because Nigeria is at a point where there are like many small mm. businesses. If you're regular on Instagram or Facebook, you'd find that there are always handles for people selling Greek yogurt, jewelry, um, jewelry clothes. So like everything. I, I feel like this was really an important mm -hmm, session mm -hmm. to hold because yeah. there are many small businesses and yeah. they need to also move you know to become bigger businesses yeah, yeah. and she talked about uh, the importance of having the right kind of mindset right uh, because sometimes you think ah, oh, I'm just around my community so I get anything goes but when you think that you're you are actually competing globally right so I mean when you like you said earlier you put out your content it's not just seen in one place right. it's, it's all over the world globally. globally so one has to really really think in that um, in that direction yes yeah all right. <laughs> so it's time for a revamp, girls, not just in our work, but in everything we touch. So coming up next, how to give that old dress a whole new pizzazz. Talk about the X Factor. Hello there. My name is Ijerma, and welcome to this segment of Living the Life. Today, we're talking about revamping an old dress. Sometimes you have that outfit that you really don't want to get rid of, but you know, you're kind of like, everybody has seen that all the time. What am I going to do about it? Don't worry. Now I'm going to show you how you can style them in different ways and people will not know a thing. You can style using accessories or you can layer. I have this dress. It's an old one, but I love it because it kind of fits really well. And so I'm going to show you how I style this in eight ways using my accessories like belts, scarves, statement jewelry, and layering. What is layering? Layering is just throwing some stuff over it, like a blazer, a top, jackets, even my husband's waistcoat. Shh. The first look is using statement jewelry. The statement jewelry is something that pops, makes a statement. I styled using a statement tassel necklace. The second look was using my belt and my scarf, just to create a different look. And I changed shoes, obviously. We don't want to rock the same shoes. The third look was throwing over a top, a polka dot green and blue top. Now the idea when you're layering is to make sure that your colors blend well. And if you can remember your fine art days in primary school, blue and green go well together. The fourth look was using a blazer, still a green blazer, so we're still good on the colors. The fifth was, like I said, stealing my husband's waistcoat. And I styled that using a belt. The sixth style, I threw on two different kinds of skirt. Remember, I love Ankara, so I had to include Ankara in this one. And the second was throwing over pleated skirts, and I changed shoes as well. And the final look was using my Ankara kimono, which was just throwing over a nice jacket over the dress. So there you have it. I have eight completely different looks of the same dress. And sometimes the dress came out as a top. No one knew a thing. But be careful, when it's really hot, you don't want to throw on too many clothes on. You don't want to be sweating. You know, people just be wondering, what's going on with that lady? I hope you'd enjoyed this session. For more style tips, please stay tuned to Living the Life. Till then, take care and stay stylish. Bye. Mm. Nice. Just one dress, but you can see what she did with 
just that one dress. She right. changed. I think she had like six yes. different uh, looks. Looks. Yeah. That's nice. So that particular dress, your wardrobe that you want to, you are planning to. <laughs> <laughs> just dash it out. <laughs> but yes, you know, sometimes you 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 are wondering, okay, what am I going to wear today? If you yeah. can just revamp it, just yeah. touch it up with something. I think that's what style means. Yeah. Not to just jump on every trend, but mm -hmm. the ability to you know put together different looks you mm -hmm. have in your wardrobe and still appear looking nice each yeah. time, nice yeah. and comfortable. Yeah. Yes. I love style. Yes. <laughs> and tying into the fact that God um, is a creative person. We can see it in the butterflies. Yes. The different animals. Birds, the... even plants. He's creative. Very creative. <laughs> and so Some animals, too, look really interesting. Like, when you see the design, you're like, no, yes. this is a masterpiece. This is too detailed. Like, ah. how do you know? Let me tell you something. <laughs> you know I'm a Milena, so I make, like, hats and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Sometimes when I want to combine colors together, I look at birds, I look at plants, because mm -hmm. God cannot make a mistake. So mm -hmm. if I see mm -hmm. orange and like fuchsia pink mm -hmm. feathers sitting on a bird, yes, that means best gonna believe work. you can put it's it gonna together. Work. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, yeah, so our journey is to be excellent at the end of the day, like our father. Right. He is the right. author of right. excellence. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, we thought we'd share some Bible guys that had the X factor. Yes. Can you guess who we're going to talk about? Mm. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. What do you have? <laughs> I have Jackie Bed. Okay. Interestingly, I like her a lot. Mm -hmm. and she sister. was resilient in the midst of hard times. Mm. She mm. was able to make tough calls and decisions while trusting God. Great. Great. I believe that. You know, the whole process of her putting Moses in the basket and all of that, she must have been inspired by the Holy Spirit that mm. this was one way to get him safe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And she also had that um, spiritual stamina to trust God that he was going to be safe because in the lake, you could have crocodiles, mm. you could have all sorts. So yeah, but it takes a woman who is really like spiritually strong and have that stamina to be able mm. to believe that that baby was going to be safe in that basket. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I have Esther. Mm, bold tactical strategic she i was, like it yeah and she also listened to counsel yeah so and i remember when she, she, she said something that if it, it was for such a time as this we right. needed she was needed at that moment right. and she didn't she didn't cower down she 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 rose up to the occasion we should be esther in fact my new name now just add okay. abigail plus abigail esther. esther yeah no you can call me abigail sometimes okay. esther note it <laughs> okay so i have paul here okay Passionate and bold, mm. intelligent and exposed. Awesome, awesome. Completely sold out to God. That part I'm so sure about. Completely sold <laughs> like, out to God. <laughs> we saw it. Okay, I have John. He's a friend of Jesus. Yay. Relational. I mean, we give it up for him. Then, grew in character as he stayed with Jesus. That's why it's important. As we stay with him, we become like him. Yeah. The more we spend time yes. in his word. I always say, like, devotion, fellowship, I mean, that's where you actually build character. Yeah. Because that's where you can really hear the Holy Spirit tell you things. Uh, that thing you did yesterday was not good. Or the way you answered your husband or that your colleague, mm. think about it again. But if you don't have that devotion, sometimes you don't you don't get that opportunity to be corrected or to True. hear the Holy Spirit nod you or really speak to you. So I believe that character is really formed in the yeah. place of devotion. Yeah. Yeah. True. Okay. I got the top. Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Had strong convictions about God. Mm. He was excellent, exceptional and stood out among his pairs. Wow. I mean, I mean. He had to have strong convictions uh -uh. about God. Like, they throw you in the lion uh -uh. den. Are you, are you sure for you that you, you have a God? Because what lion, not dogs den. No? You see, some of us, when you just see beware of dogs, to even enter that compound, you're afraid. Yeah. Lion. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my hmm. goodness. <laughs> Well, I think uh, we had a great time at the end of the day. Yes. Um, we learned a lot. Yes. I was happy even when um, Chudo talked about the Bible. She compared uh, David and Saul. And so, you right. know, So it's been a journey yes. through the Bible in a yes. sense, yes. But getting biblical lessons. Yes. Okay? Looking for some X factor, look no further. God has got truckloads of the stuff, but he's got way more than that. He's got love for you that would never give up on you. If you want to find out more, just call the number on the screen and we can talk about it. We don't like to leave you, but we really must say goodbye right mm -hmm. here. We hope you had an amazing time on the program. Yes, we'll be back before you know it. Until then, keep living the life. Bye. Bye.